Hi, welcome to your carrier update. I'm Mike Vincent. He's Zach Strickland. This is brought to you by Power Fleet. We've got charts, we've got information and insight. What's going on, my brother? Yes, we do. Uh, yes, we do. Tender rejection do rates lie. took a big drop uh, mm. yesterday, down to 21.8%. Uh, that is down from 22.4%. Not necessarily an indication that everything is going to get easier from here on out to find capacity, but it is a pretty significant move on a day-over-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we'll dive into that here in a minute on where that exactly is happening. But yeah. first things first, that orange line that we see here is our outbound tender lead time index, which okay. you can see does increase at times, and that is holiday impacts that you're seeing in these big spikes. But the general direction of lead times over the last year has been higher. Like shippers are trying to put uh, their pickup requests out further uh, from their request date. Right. So they're trying right. to expand that to give carriers a little bit more uh, heads up and basically be able to prepare a little bit easier. Uh, so what this is saying is yesterday, the t the acceptance for 2.82 days out pickup yeah uh the rejection was 21.81 exactly exactly so so about a, no, close to a three-day lead time at this yeah. point the closer close. this thing gets to three days you know that is that is probably it's a, it's a ceiling ish <laughs> yeah it, but it's it's a that's a decent lead time uh yeah it's typically how you know typically we're about two and a half days in 2019 we about 2.5 days We've increased all the way up to 2.8 days over the last year or so, and that's that's, that's an average of oh, thousands of loads, tens of thousands of loads. So that oh, yeah. is, think about the minutes and the hours that that actually uh, accounts for oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. over quite, the last quite, bit. So that's, yeah. that's a lot of time uh, that we're talking about in terms of the aggregate value. So lead times on the rise day over day as well. So you're, that's also helping to bring those rejection rates down. Uh, Easier a for a carrier to accept something two days out than in the next hour. Exactly, exactly. Usually. So, day, you know, if you put it out in the same day, likelihood of you getting uh, good compliance on that, not great. You're basically saying, let's go to the spot market. Yeah. So, let's look at the map and see where in the United States some of this easing has gone, maybe some of where some of these lead times have increased as well. Sure. And these are going to be in markets like Lakeland, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Detroit, Michigan, Louisville, Kentucky, Phoenix, Arizona, El Paso, Texas, and of course, Augusta, Maine, which is the entire state of Maine, because uh, most yeah, of Maine yeah, is, is population wise, right? <laughs> yeah, most of Maine is very rural. Uh, I mean, I think it's like 80% of it is actually just moose. a forest. <laughs> moose. Or moose, moose, one of those two. Um, and they, uh, you know, so the markets that are easier to get capacity in just got easier. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. these are the backhaul markets of the United States. You've got a ton of freight moving into Lakeland, Florida. Not a lot of freight coming out. Yeah. Tons of freight going into Phoenix, Arizona, largely from Los Angeles, uh, but not a lot coming out. <laughs> not a lot yeah. coming back out long haul. There's not a big Phoenix to Lakeland yeah, roll. Yeah, exactly. So and we've, got, <laughs> we've got these blue markets here that we can't ignore. So the Savannah, yeah. uh, Cape Girardeau, and Denver all showing tightening conditions here week over week in these markets. So if you're a carrier, not the time to try to get into these backhaul markets right now. They're yeah, getting it's, a it's lot. Sometimes, you know, Detroit's the place to go. Yeah, sometimes it is. It really but, is when you're sitting or up it's there, just but not it isn't, as, this, it isn't yeah, today. Exactly. This, this, this week, notice you're going to see much less activity on the spot yeah. market, much less tenders coming your way, et cetera. So Savannah, Cape Girardeau, Denver, better this week in terms better of overall uh, for load. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get reloaded easier this week in these markets than you did last week. Excellent. So let's move on to the tree map and see these things in visual. Let's do that. Here. So we've got, so you see the same thing that we just saw, but Augusta, Phoenix, Detroit, Lakeland, El Paso, all showing easing. Contraction, yeah. Denver, Savannah, uh, Cape Girardeau, and of course, Milwaukee, Stockton, uh, also all showing some easing signals week over, or tightening signals week over week. These are going to be your markets where you're going to see increasing load tenders, increasing spot market activity. Yeah. Maybe not significant in some of those smaller values, but a decent amount nonetheless. You're, you're definitely seeing improvement there in terms of capacity utilization. So let's go on into the charts and see some of these markets in action. These are going to be the easing markets. So we talked about Detroit, Phoenix, showing easing conditions. This is what we're talking about. This big dip all the way yeah. from almost 15% down to 10% out of Phoenix. Uh, and again, about 11, 12%, all the way down to 9.2% out of Detroit. So it's a big jump, big, these are, big these drops. These are big drops out of markets that 
you can see they're well below the national average already. Yes. That is traditional for a backhaul market, a market that you have oversupply conditions. Let's they look at the next dropped at the end of September, leveled off, and now another drop. Let's mm -hmm. look at these tightening signals. Savannah, right. Denver, and Cape Girardeau. Oh, yeah, there's the Cape colors. Girardeau jumping all the way back up to over 50%. And then you've got Savannah here at 24%. Denver climbing out of a hole. It actually eased all the way down to about 11% early September. Now it's back up over 21%, reversing a trend line that we were seeing since July. These easing. are big. These are fairly big jumps. Big jumps. A lot these of volatility. These are 20%. These are 50% jumps. These are big, huge jumps out of these Over markets. the time frame. Yeah. So these are the markets to go into this week and expect better conditions than you saw last week if you're a carrier. It looks like strong signals there. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Zach. We'll catch up with you a little bit later in the show.